All right, Matt Morrow, uh, you were the production Hi. designer. Matt Morrow. <laughs> Hi. Um, so you were the production designer of Mr. Robot. Uh, you worked on the pilot. Uh, so you were there establishing the look of this show from the beginning. What were some of your initial ideas for it? Um, some of the initial ideas I had, we, um, well, to begin with, Sam and I talked a lot about just the fact that it was a New York based show. We really wanted to make sure that we, um, showcased the city and, and that we, um, and we sort of captured a, I guess I would call it realistic. Um, uh, gritty seems like the wrong word, but we wanted to just sort of like capture a very realistic uh, vision and view of the city. Um, also, by given the nature of the show, we had the opportunity to sort of like open a window into various, you know, it's such a large city. And to say that we're going to capture a realistic view of the city is a difficult task because there are so many different realistic views of the city. So it was a great opportunity to sort of like we see like high end corporate world we see sort of a middle mid-level corporate world we also see a very gritty you know the world of f society and the and the arcade you're going to see a very um you know gritty low-end look to new york and i guess one of the big things to start off with is how we would sort of like either differentiate between those or sort of like draw uh little comparisons and compare and contrast with them well um, yeah that's uh one of the things about the show that uh one of the buried themes of it is about this uh, separation of class. You know, you've got the, uh, uh, in the pilot, there's this big mystery around it, but there definitely is a contrast between the world of these high level upper 1% executives and uh, where everybody else lives, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so go into a little more detail about um, showing that contrast. Uh, that sure. It was, um, is it well one to draw a comparison between the world of um f society and the world of evil corp you know in the pilot we we only get like a very brief glimpse into the world of evil corp and it's in that boardroom um which you know we definitely wanted to sort of capture this very um you know glass and steel high rise look out over the city, you know, almost like puppet masters in a weird kind of way, um, looking out over the city and controlling things. But also there was an opportunity there to, to with the world of F society, we were able, because of the, the arcade aspect, I feel like we were able to sort of draw in one, a bit more of a grittier look, but also there's a lot more color and light and interactive light, especially when we see F society, see the arcade, as they're in the beginning, you know, that this uh, the idea that we could have sort of a, an older, um, like old style video games that I would remember from when I used to go to the arcade, <laughs> old boxy video games that have a lot of like interactive light to them as well as like we could bring in some like greens and yellows and oranges and we did, we, so we tried to bring in um, uh, color where we could in that world and then that, and then by, comparison or contrast you have the boardroom where because of the one the glass and steel and, and the old world materials almost in a way of like marble and like a you know granite or you know wood with a marble centerpiece conference table mm -hmm. but at the same time the view you get of that because of you have all these guys in like black and gray suits and you have these big windows to the outside world it almost falls into black and white shade and shadow a little bit and color sort of falls away and it even it seems even more like to me it felt like it seems even more like uh unseen hands controlling the world um whereas uh, you know f society felt of the people and of uh of their world i thought that was such a clever idea uh putting f society in this abandoned amusement park you know it really um <laughs> Uh, uh, it, it adds something to it, I think, that's mm -hmm. an extra texture and layer. Um, talk about the home of our main character, played by Rami Malek. Uh, you know, you, uh, a home really expresses uh, yeah. what a person is, so. Well, his, um, uh, that was our one, our one built set that we had on the pilot. 
Um, and because of that, we were able to kind of create it and do it, you know, make it what we wanted it to be. And that was, and again, from talking to Sam, um, it was almost, I would draw comparisons almost cave-like in the way that I started out with it. When we wanted it to feel, again, we wanted it to feel like a realistic, you know, New York character's apartment, especially someone who has the job he does and also the personality he does. We didn't want it to be a massive, you know, unrealistic apartment. So we played it as a sort of a version of a studio apartment, almost like an alcove studio where he had, he had a room that was his, that was a bedroom, but it wasn't separated by doors. We could kind of like basically have the whole apartment lays out in one big space. We also, in our minds, Elliot lives probably on the back of the building, so he doesn't have views out the windows. He just has air shaft views. Um, but again, all that kind of played into the, um, the, you know, making it more of a cave, making it more of a sanctuary for him, especially as someone who deals with social anxiety. He's not exactly, a, you know, a, you know, bright, open person. So I feel like the apartment should reflect that about him. Um, but at the same time, I feel like it does have little elements of character to it that in warmth, he's, you know, that, that, uh, that feels like we start, we start to get a little bit of a, a, a peek into the humanity of Elliot. It's not just a barren, empty space. It's got, you know, there is some of, obviously it's full of what his interests are between the computers and all the computer equipment and that kind of thing. But, um, I like the sort of like found nature of some of the furniture in the apartment. I like sort of expressing that um, that vibe of uh, of the space, um, and uh, and yeah, I think you think that was that was sort of where we where we started with that, with sort of like capturing this the the home of Elliot. Right. Um, so let's talk about uh, some logistics and practicalities. How long did you have to prepare uh, for the pilot? How long did you have to shoot it? Prep, we had, it's a good question. I, have to, uh, I want to say we had like three, three or four weeks to, that we prepped. Um, maybe a little bit more, but I think it was around there. And then shooting, we shot for essentially two to two and a half weeks. I think we shot 12, 12 or 13 days. Um, so on like a, but that included some like, um, reduced unit and, and like second unit days. So all in, I think it was like two weeks worth of, um, worth of shooting for the, for the pilot. And we had a few little reduced unit and a half day shoots that went in there to get extra footage. Mm -hmm. It's a very impressively made pilot. Um, uh, talk about, uh, you know, shooting on uh, 12 days, I guess, is like sort of a luxury for a lot of hours of television. Uh, but nevertheless, it's 12 days. So, uh, and you've got a bunch of different sets in there too, not just yeah. some of what we talked about, but, uh, you know, there's that server room in there as well that they have to go to uh, during a very crucial moment in the pilot that I don't want to give away. But, um, <laughs> uh, so talk about just, you know, juggling all these different things and, uh, you know, um, was it, hard? it was difficult. I mean, it was a difficult, it was a very hectic schedule. And, you know, we had to, you know, there were some locations that, uh, you know, it's always, at least for me, it's always a luxury when you can move into a location and be there for a couple of days, because then I can focus on having, you know, at least a day or two to focus on what the next thing on the line is. But this was definitely a situation where every location we were in, we were there for a day and then moving on to the next place. So it just, once we started roll going, once we started shooting, because there were so many locations, and we did move around the city quite a bit, from Coney Island, which we shot on location, the arcade was actually in Coney Island, the All Safe office was in Midtown, the um, Evil Corp was in Lower Manhattan, so we were we were all over the map, um, and then you know Elliot's apartment, although it was a build, was in on a stage in Queens, but plus we had an exterior in the Lower East Side. Um, and by the nature of the show as well, a lot of the places we were, where we were just there for quick bits, you know, like there was like, there were like bars we'd only be in quickly and then we'd move to another bar or we had a, you know, we did the, the night, we did a lot of night shooting, which is, um, I always find difficult because I'm sort of, 
while I'm prepping whatever what's coming up, I'm also trying to kind of be on set and and uh, and help you know help with the visual look of the things as they're shooting it. So if we're shooting all night and then the next day I've got to get up and go prep something, it's sort of like I'm burning the candle at both ends a little bit. Um, but for something like this, it's a lot of fun <laughs> to do. It's just because it just feels you know you, we felt like when we were make when we were in the midst of making it, you felt like you were making something really interesting and special and something that wasn't something different for TV. It was you know we felt like we were really making something almost like it was almost like we were making a uh, really fast paced movie. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and it was it was going to be a different look and a different vibe for a TV show. So it's kind of exciting in that regard. Yeah, it definitely feels that way. Uh, it's. Uh very visual and I mean it doesn't look like a TV show you had a really great director working on this too yeah um, talk about what he gave and, and what the collaboration was like there um, it was great and he he and Sam really saw an eye on just the the, the world of New York they wanted to capture and Niels brought you know he really wanted to to dig in and, and you know dig into this like gritty world um, of not only sort of Elliot, but also the F Society world and, and the uh, um, and the look of all that. And so he was um, he was great to you know to sort of like to work with and to sort of like flesh out these you know that look. And you know uh, I think he really got the idea of New York at night, <laughs> fun, which is fun to shoot, and I think visually and cinematically really amazing. And, and he was really into the idea of capturing New York at night. Also into the idea of being in real locations. Like we shot the subway at a real, you know, at a, at a real subway station. And I think he was, you know, between he and Sam, we would, when we walked into a location like that, they both sort of like um, can see the inherent beauty and, 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 the, and find the, uh, you know, like those long expansive hallways and the, and the pipes above and like, just like find angles and looks that really sort of, I think it's, are expressive and, and showcase the locations in a way that they haven't been seen before. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, for people who don't know, uh, Neil's directed the original Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Just another uh, film guy coming over into TV. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, which, I mean, there's a lot of that these days, and I think, the, uh, I think that it shows in the work um, yeah, yeah. Isn't it an exciting time to work in television for that reason? I think it is because you're getting the the stories are getting grander in scope, and I think that that makes it just that much more interesting and fun to work on. Um, even from my, you know, on the in the level of the sets, but just to be, you know, the idea that you're making TV shows that are almost sort of like ten hour movies in a way that like they have this like long format storytelling and they're very grand in their scope and the world they're trying to capture. And it's fun to sort of like be a you know be a part of establishing that world and and uh, and creating that world. Mm -hmm. So you worked on the pilot. You didn't come back for any more, but I'm curious, have you watched uh, the show at all? I mean what do you think? I have yeah I watched the I watched the entire first season and I love it. <laughs> it was fantastic. <laughs> I I was I was really impressed with what we did on the pilot, and I was anxious to kind of see where the, to see where the story went, um, because we got a little bit of the story on the pilot, but there, obviously there was more to it, and I was anxious to see where it went, and I was I was really uh, impressed with with uh, what they created and what they did going forward, and again just the fact that it's definitely not like most TV shows, and it's sort of like established a new language in its own way. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much and congratulations on your work and it was a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, you bet. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Have a great day. You too.